Let me start another important topic in gynecology and a very interesting one also that is endometriosis. Though we are uh, going to talk about this topic, you know, assembling all the you know uh, necessary things here, but this term is not new at all for you. So let me ask you, what is endometriosis? Sir, endometriosis is the endometrium grow outside the endometrium. It is known as the endometrium. Presence of endometrium tissue outside the endometrium. Presence of atopic endometrial tissue. Very good. So all of you are absolutely correct. You know, you can answer in a different way, but the meaning is same one. It is an ectopic presence of endometrial tissue. Okay, that is also correct. And if you say presence of endometrial tissue outside the uterine cavity, this is also correct. Okay, this is known as endometriosis. Now, it is not that easy case because this endometrial tissue is hormonally sensitive tissue. Okay. Hormonally sensitive tissue. And every month, there will be you know, fluctuation of the hormone level because of the ovarian hormone production. So as a result of this, this endometrial tissue can bleed cyclically. Okay? And this bleeding is responsible for all the signs and symptoms of endometriosis. If this bleeding occur to some part of the body, okay, and it, it collects there, you know, it can lead to fibrosis because of extensive inflammatory reaction. Okay? It can lead to addition, and all those features are responsible for signs and symptoms. So with this information, let's enter into the topic. Let's see here. Endometriosis is a common disorder which is characterized by the presence of endometrial gland and the stroma. You can simply call it endometrial tissue outside of the endometrial cavity or ectopic presence of endometrial tissue. Endometriosis is a benign condition, but one which is of great importance in gynecology because the distressing symptomatology the association with infertility and the potential for invasion of the GI and urinary tract is such an important point or features in gynecological disease. Now see here, distressing symptomatology. If there is adenomyosis, which is a part of endometriosis, you know, adenomyosis is the endometriosis of the uh, uterine a muscle itself means the, the endometrial uh, tissue is present deeper into the muscle. So in that type of situation, there is menorrhagia, there is dysmenorrhea. These are the you know, distressing type of symptom. And in case of endometriosis of the ovary or in other part like fallopian tube or even in the abdominal cavity, different area, there will be bleeding in every month. And that collection of the blood can give rise to pain inside the abdomen, okay, and all other features. So this is called distressing symptomatology. In case of fallopian tube or ovary, it can result in infertility, and it can also be present inside the GI system and the urinary system. So don't be surprised if it leads to bleeding from the GI tract, okay, bleeding from the GI tract, which may manifest as Hematochagia, okay, hematochagia, or from the urinary tract as hematuria. Now, who will think about endometriosis as the first cause for hematuria? We never think like that. Never. We have so many other, you know, common causes for hematuria. But when our investigation, okay, confirm that none of those were present, which we are thinking, then we can think about some rare causes of hematuria, and this is one of, the, one of that cause. Even hemoptysis can occur in case of endometriosis. Okay, and these are very, very interesting type of cases. Let's move on. The most common site of endometriosis are these three ovaries, Pouch of Douglas or cul de sac and uterosacral ligament. 
these are the most common site you know for endometriosis you can you can say a most common number one ovary number two pouch of douglas and number three uterocycle ligament followed by so many other site now see here the possible other sites include broad ligament fallopian tube and round ligament i'm sure every student know the meaning of this cervix and vagina gastrointestinal tract like recto sigmoid junction cecum ileum and even the appendix in abdominal scar okay now this is very interesting abdominal scar uh, in the past some surgery was done in the abdomen and abdominal scar has developed endometrial tissue inguinal region even in the pelvic lymph node urinary bladder even in the kidneys or ureter even in the lung pleura or inside the heart in the thigh in the axilla or inside the bone or even in the nasal passages okay inside the nose now these are quite a rare type of you know uh, areas but cases have been reported that's why they have been listed here now, one of the very interesting uh, thing for you uh, for anyone is how this endometrial tissue develops there or how it has reached there okay so we'll talk about that in our uh, etiology and pathogenesis now one more point endometriosis within the wall of the uterus is termed adenomyosis we already talked about this in some previous topic but in this class we are going to repeat this once again now all of you please look at this picture here this is the anatomical or these are the anatomical site for endometriosis common one ovary Okay, at the ovary on the other side, cul de sac, a pouch of Douglas. Okay, uh, then this is recto sigmoid area, recto sigmoid area, the junction of the sigmoid colon and rectum, uterosacral ligament, uterosacral ligament. These are the common one, followed by so many other sites. Now, a small question: You have already done this before. if endometriosis occur inside the ovary what is the special term we use for that yes what we call that if it starts to bleed and then you know uh, leads to hematoma formation there we use a certain special uh, you know medical term for that what is the name anyone it is known as chocolate cyst okay chocolate cyst or endometrioma endometrioma or chocolate cyst we'll talk about that later but we have already done that in the benign tumor discussion of ovary so this is another picture which is showing uh, some of the common site for endometrial growth which are shown in red ovary okay okay uh so this this is rectum and this is uterus so what is this 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 is called yes what is this area called quickly pouch of pouch of douglas pouch, pouch of douglas. douglas very nice this area is called pouch of douglas excellent or cul de sac now see there they have shown clearly there is presence of endometrial tissue okay then even on the urinary bladder they have shown even anterior abdominal wall they have shown okay so these are the some of the site which are shown here and this is another picture which i have collected from the internet and these these are the different site for endometriosis this is a normal normal you know endometrial tissue present inside the endometrial cavity okay but all of the others are abnormal these are all abnormal presence of the endometrial tissue it can present in so many different places now look at this uh, picture very carefully when when we are examining with laparoscope okay 
examining with laparoscope, the endometriosis looks like this. Endometriosis looks like this. This is known as burned match stick appearance. Burned match stick appearance. Okay, we'll talk about that in our clinical feature again, but this is exactly how it looks. Okay, this has already endometrial tissue present with a bit of bleeding. And that's why the typical color, bluish black color would be seen. Burned match stick appearance. Different additions will occur because of the chronic bleed, because of the chronic fibrosis or chronic inflammatory reaction, and all these things. Now, with this information, let's talk about etiopathogenesis of endometriosis. You can call it etiology or etiopathogenesis as well. Many hypotheses have been suggested to explain the basis of endometriosis, but none are fully accepted. It is difficult to accept, you know, when we go through this, you also think like that. These are difficult to accept. Okay, but we, we, we don't have, uh, you know, any choice. Probably a variety of mechanisms operate for the reason why endometrial tissue is present outside the endometrial cavity. And these main theories are, the first one is implantation due to retrograde menstruation. Implantation of endometrial tissue due to retrograde menstruation. This is one of the hypotheses. In this, the endometrial fragment during menstruation are transported through the fallopian tube at the time of menstruation and they implant and grow in various intra-abdominal sites. But it is difficult to uh, explain in all the sites, you know. Probably you can explain it, okay, uh, till the fallopian tube. You can explain it till the ovary. You can also explain it till the uh, uh, you know, peritoneal cavity. But how can you explain it in the lung? How can you explain it in the nasal cavity, for example, inside the heart? Okay. So all of the uh, presence of those endometrial tissue cannot be explained by this hypothesis alone. But probably this is one of the most important you know, mechanism which is involved here. Now, uh, this is a retrograde uh, menstruation, uh, okay? Because of the retrograde menstruation, there is a collection of the blood and this blood has some endometrial tissue. This theory is suggesting that, okay? So this endometrial tissue will be grown in that area leading to endometriosis. The second one is embolization of endometrial tissue in pelvic vein or lymphatics. So this is about the embolization theory. Endometrial tissue has been found in pelvic lymphatics in 20% of the patient. This is an evidence for uh, this type of uh, hypothesis or a mechanism. Okay, so this is the second one. So through the lymphatics and blood vessels, some of the endometrial tissue has been, uh, you know, gone there or has been reached there through embolism not a very strong one. Third is the implantation in the site of injury. For example, after cesarean section or episiotomy. Now see there, during cesarean section, we give incision onto the anterior wall of the uterus, okay? So we take the baby out. So during that time, you also give uh, incision to the endometrium, of course, then only you can reach to the cavity of the uterus. So during that time, it is believed that some of the endometrial tissue has implanted in the site of injury, like in the scar, in those incision area, you know. So who knows, they are responsible for endometriosis of those sites. So this is one of the theory. What is episiotomy? Cut made in the perineum during childbirth. Exactly, absolutely correct. This is cutting of the perineum, okay, just to facilitate the widening of the birth canal so that baby can be delivered easily. This is known as episiotomy. So even uh, during the time, you know, because the blood which is coming out may having maybe having some uh, endometrial tissue and that can, 
uh, spill into the incision site. Another theory or another mechanism is metaplasia of the silomic derivative. Silomic derivative means silomic epithelium. Silomic epithelium means mesothelial tissue, mesothelial tissue, like pleural tissue, pericardial tissue, and peritoneal tissue. They are called silomic or mesothelial tissue. So endometriosis results from a metaplastic transformation of peritoneal mesothelium into the endometrium. But why this occur? We don't know. What is the factor which leads to metaplasia? We really do not know. So this is just another you know, hypothesis, which is uh, uh, giving the explanation of endometriosis here. Let's move on. Now, after knowing all these etiopathogenesis, let's talk about the pathology. What really happens in those endometriotic sites? Most commonly, the, the deposit of the endometriotic tissues are multiple. They are small, less than one centimeter in size, and they are blue-black nodules which looks like burnt match stick appearance. This is a classical description, burnt match stick appearance because the exact appearance like that. If the condition is severe, then the nodules may be larger and they are surrounded by variable amounts of fibrosis. Fibrosis usually occur uh, in a little bit chronic type of case. And this fibrosis results in a lot of extra clinical feature. For ex example, there is adhesion. Okay, uh, sometimes the uterus is also adhered because of the fibrosis, and it will be retroverted uterus. Sometimes the, the fallopian tube is adhered to the nearby structure, and that results in kinking of the fallopian tube, and that can simply lead to infertility. Other atypical lesions commonly seen include red implant, which, which may look like a petechial, vesicular, or polypoid, or even hemorrhagic, or red flame-like lesion. All of these are, look red in color. That's why red implant and serous or even clear vesicle. So these are a bit atypical type of lesion. The most common one is a burnt matchstick appearance or blue black nodules, and others a bit atypical or rare. Involvement of the ovary may lead to the formation of endometrioma, also known as chocolate cyst. And this is the most common type of presentation in case of endometriosis, okay, which we have already discussed before. Uh, uh, please uh, try to remember uh, endometrioma or chocolate cyst is the name which we give if endometriosis occur inside the ovary. Now, the meaning of endometrioma, if you analyze, the meaning is right there. Oma, okay, is the suffix we, we add for the benign tumor. Okay. Though it is not exactly a benign tumor, it looks like benign tumor because of collection of the blood clot inside the ovary. And these blood clots are derived from the endometrial tissue. That's why the term endometrioma. Now, some other types of pathological appearance would be deep infiltrating type of nodules, which extend more than five millimeter below the peritoneal surface. And they may penetrate or adhere to the other structure like bowel, bladder, ureters, or even vagina. So these are responsible for adhesion, okay, or fibrosis inside the abdominal cavity. Sometimes extensic pelvic damage can occur, okay, and they may result in infertility. But the basic mechanism is again fibrosis and adhesion. Now, with this information, let's talk about what are the symptoms and signs of endometriosis. Now, symptoms are so variable. It depends which organs are affected, whether ovaries are affected or, or pouch of Douglas is affected 
or other abdominal organs are affected or there is adenomyosis. It depends on that. Now, let's uh, describe the symptoms here. In case of female reproductive tract, if endometriosis occur, there will be dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea. What is the meaning of dysmenorrhea? Menstrual cramp, pain during menstruation. Exactly. Absolutely correct. Cramping pain during menstruation or during period. Dysmenorrhea. Usually worsening from the late 20s onward. And if adenomyosis is there, then there will be dysmenorrhea. Okay, is usually, uh, you know, because of adenomyosis. Or another reason can also be given. For example, at the same time, the endometrial tissue will also bleed wherever it is present. So there will also be pain. But that pain is not a part of dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea means the uterus is, uh, you know, causing the pain. Deep dyspareunia. This is the pain during sexual intercourse. And deep is the term which is given here because of the lesions which are present. Just go through the lesion now. It mainly occurs with the lesion in caldi sac or pouch of Douglas, which is very deep, uterosacral ligament, and posterior vaginal fornix. So all are quite a deeper structure. If I'm talking, you know, in the perspective or from the perspective of vagina. They are a deeper structure okay, to the vagina. That's why deep dysparia. Premenstrual or postmenstrual spotting. Okay, this may be a cause of menorrhagia. And again, the usual you know, pathology which is affected there is adenomyosis. Spotting means bleeding. Lower abdominal and pelvic pain. We already talked about. Uh, it can easily found in the pelvic cavity. So there will be constant pain, okay? This pain uh, can be described in different way. One, at the time of bleeding, okay? If there is a collection of a large blood clot, that can result in vague type of pain. And later on, that blood clot will cause chronic inflammation, okay? And that inflammation will lead to extensive fibrosis and adhesion. Now this will result in pain. So. There are different mechanisms there. <clears throat> One of the most important, you know, complication, <clears throat> or you can also call it symptom in this uh, disease is infertility. 30 to 40 percent of the couple become infertile, especially if the female has endometriosis. And the most important uh, reason for infertility here is ovarian involvement and fallopian tube involvement. Let's move on. Now, what type of clinical features or symptoms would be there if urinary tract is having endometrial tissue? Urinary tract. See there. Bladder involvement is rare, but it can happen. And it may cause cyclical hematuria. A very good history is necessary in this case. And the patient clearly tells us, doctor, I only develop uh, bleeding, okay, at the end of the month. Or when uh, she is having a period, then at the same time, uh, she is having hematuria. But remember yesterday, what we discussed, uh, one of the cause of pseudo hematuria is menstrual period. So she may be confused whether the blood in the urine is because of contamination of the of period itself, or it is some extra type of hematuria. So during that situation, we can go for the investigation. But doctor has to ask this question exclusively. Then only you can diagnose. Otherwise, there are uh, hundreds of the causes of hematuria, you know, which one is responsible, it is very difficult. So we usually take help of investigation if we have difficulty. Ureteric obstruction can also occur because of blood clot formation. Now, if GI tract is having endometrial tissue, okay, uh, then the patient may present with rectal bleeding, rectal bleeding, and if there is a fresh blood 
in the stool. Uh, what we call that? What is the term we give? Yes. What term? Hematochagia. Hematochagia. Exactly. Hematochagia. Melina. No, melina is not a fresh one. Okay. Yes, fresh one. No fresh blood. Yes, fresh one is called hematochagia. Melina means, means altered type of blood, a little bit it's older. Hematine, exactly. Acid hematin, which which is uh, you know uh, which is uh, possible only if there is presence of the acid. So in case of upper GI type of bleeding, uh, melina is seen, uh, and in case of lower GI type of bleeding, hematochagia is seen. So this is a rectal bleeding. So hematochagia is a proper word here, and another one. There is a cyclical pain while the person is passing motion. This is known as dyskagia. Okay, dyskagia. And there may be constipation because of the pressure. Now, endometrial tissue can be present in these other sites as well. Very rarely they are present. So, wherever they are present, the symptoms may be different. If they are present in the surgical scar or umbilicus, there will be cyclical pain and bleeding from that area. And it is very, very uh, interesting one, isn't it? On the surgical scar, a prior surgery on the abdomen, okay, there is some growth of the tissue and that tissue starts to bleed okay, cyclically every month. A good doctor will definitely think about endometriosis because what type of tissue will grow in the surgical scar? And why it is bleeding? This is not a difficult diagnosis, especially at, at this stage. In the lung, if the endometrial tissues are present, there will be cyclical hemoptysis and there may be hemopneumothorax as well. A simply hemothorax or hemopneumothorax, these, these you know, things can rupture and if they communicate into the pleural cavity, they can lead to pneumothorax as well. So pneumothorax, if only blood is collected in the pleural cavity, hemoneumo is blood along with the air. If it is present in the nose or nasal cavity, there will be cyclical epistaxis. These are very rare presentation of endometriosis, but uh, cases have been reported. Now, what are the signs? Science means during physical examination, what we get there. Signs may be absent, okay, or they may include as follows. Maybe absent means during the physical examination, you, you may not get anything. Just the very suggestive history is there or some symptoms are there, okay? So if they are present, they may be tender nodules along the uterosacral ligament or in the pounds of Douglas. The spouse of Douglas or a cul de sac can be uh, palpated by bimanual examination or by per vaginal examination. And if there is a tenderness felt or some nodules along with tenderness, and in the typical history, you know, we may suspect endometriosis. A fixed retroverted uterus on bimanual examination may be one of the signs of endometriosis. Now, I'm sure you all know the meaning of retroverted uterus. What is retroverted uterus? Sir, uh, retroverted uterus is, is, is a type of uterus that is uh, uh, rotated backward. And sir, the biggest problem is that it, pressure, that it, pre uh, that it put pressure on the urinary bladder, sir, causing that uh, stoppage of urine in the area. Absolutely. It's absolutely correct. Okay. I'm sure many other students also know that. Usually, our uterus is anti-verted and anti-flexed anti usually, okay? But in this case, it is exactly opposite. anti means, you know, forward bending. retro means backward bending. It, it has bent towards the sigmoid uh, colon side, rectal side. So if uterus is like that, because of the fibrosis, okay? Because of the addition or fibrosis, uh, uterus has retro in this case. That is the reason. So it will give pressure to the bladder neck and there is high chance of retention of the urine in this case. Very nice. Now, ovaries are enlarged. And we call that chocolate cyst. There are visible lesion in the vagina or in the, on the cervix if there are present. In every case, 
there may not be this sign remember that because endometriosis can occur in so many different sites so according to that uh, these uh, you know physical findings are seen and the adnexa may be tender or fixed you know adnexa is the structure on the both side of the uterus fallopian tube broad ligament and those are the part so they may be fixed again because of adhesion formation now have a look here okay see this uh, this is a, a retroverted uh, you know uterus a retroverted and here is a antiverted uterus antiverted versus retroverted so see this okay retroverted one so retroverted uterus in in, uh, in someone Uh, along with those typical history, the history is very very important here. The symptoms suggestive of endometriosis, then we can go for certain investigation to confirm it. That's the way. Now, what are those investigation? So let's list the investigation, and then we can uh, talk about that after the break. Those investigation, the most important one. is laparoscopy laparoscopy is the single most most important investigation in this case this is the laparoscopic visualization of the endometrial deposit it is considered the gold standard investigation unless visible lesions are seen in the posterior vaginal fornix or elsewhere if they are deposited in the posterior vaginal fornix then with a speculum examination sometimes we can see otherwise if they are present inside the abdominal cavity or in the pelvic cavity laparoscopy is the gold standard investigation gold standard means most important one which will give us the diagnosis typical appearance is a burnt match stick appearance So never forget this. This this itself can be asked as MCQ question in the exam. Bond matchstick appearance is seen in which of the following situation? They may give you four option. Always choose endometriosis as the correct one. And rarely they may be red lesion or fibrotic lesion. Now we are talking about. Uh, the laparoscopic examination of endometriosis which is considered a gold standard one regarding diagnosis and this is exactly how it looks in laparoscopic evaluation this is known as burnt matchstick appearance see there these are the different endometrial deposit or tissue okay uh, inside the abdominal cavity and they look like that this is the diagnostic appearance sometimes rarely they may have be of different color also sometimes red lesion okay red looking lesions and sometimes they are white fibrous uh, band or lesion as well this is too much scar tissue formed already this is a chronic type of case now second important type of investigation which is done okay is ultrasound ultrasound uh can suggest so many important features of endometriosis now the types of ultrasound we do here is a transvaginal ultrasonography or endoanal ultrasound transvaginal has uh, many different you know indication it is helpful in assessing endometriotic ovarian cyst so chocolate cyst can be diagnosed by this transvaginal ultrasound is of little value in assessing the presence of adhesion and mild peritoneal deposit uh, laparoscopy is much better regarding this transvaginal ultrasound may be useful in assessing deep infiltrating disease where endometriosis involves the pouch of douglas because uh, pouch of douglas is very near to the vagina isn't it uh, it is just above the posterior fornix of the vagina so it can be easily seen by transvaginal ultrasound but if some deposits are a bit further away then a transvaginal ultrasound may not detect them that is the point 
Now, endoanal ultrasound has been evaluated for the diagnosis of deep infiltrating endometriosis, but it is not very commonly used in clinical practice. Now, after uh, ultrasound, okay, we have certain other types of investigation like MRI, histological confirmation, okay, and according to the organ involved, we can go for certain other tests as well. So MRI is useful to diagnose adenomyosis and deep uh, seated tissue. Adenomyosis is endometriosis of the uterus itself, like those glands are present in the muscle area. So MRI would, would pick them very easily. Regarding the histological confirmation, okay, this is also known as biopsy and histopathological exam. Histological confirmation of at least one lesion is considered ideal. If an endometrioma is more than three centimeter in diameter or deeply infiltrating disease is present, histology should be obtained to identify endometriosis and to exclude malignancy. Now, let me explain this. Malignancy has one of the property of local invasion. It, it can also badly affect the surrounding area, okay? almost looks like addition and fibrosis. That's why uh, it should be excluded. And the only way to exclude them is take a biopsy there and uh, study on the histopathological exam. Another indication may be uh, if endometrioma or chocolate cyst in the ovary is a bigger in size, then also we need to rule out maybe it is some other type of uh, ovarian cyst or not, maybe malignant one. That's why histopathological confirmation is essential. Investigation of other uh, possible site is dictated by the symptom, like if hematuria is there, then cystoscopy is done, okay? If nasal uh, type of endometriosis is suspected, then nasal examination should be done. Similarly, if hemoptysis is the case and that is suspected to be caused by endometriosis, bronchoscopy can be done. So similarly, you know, a lot of other investigation can be listed here. Now, MRI scan is shown here. And see this, this is the MRI scan, this is the uterus here. This is the uterus, here is the uterine cavity. This one, here is the cervix, okay, and the vagina. So if you see carefully, this, uh, you know, relatively whitish area is the normal one, normal, you know, uh, thickness, okay, or normal muscle layer of the uterus, but inside this see some darker areas are there. So these darker, uh, you know, areas are adenomyosis. <clears throat> so MRI can pick them quite early. Now, what are the differential diagnosis of uh, endometriosis? So different type of conditions ca can be thought. Uh, like chronic pelvic inflammatory disease or PID, ovarian tumor, whether it is benign or malignant, unruptured ectopic pregnancy. During that class also, we, we have taken the name of endometriosis, okay? Musculoskeletal causes, which may cause pain here and there, and some urinary causes, like some bladder pathology, which may also lead to hematuria. So all of these are considered differential diagnosis. So if your teacher asks why it is considered, you need to give one or two reasons. For example, in, in you know, PID, it's a chronic type, there will be abdominal pain, okay? There will be abdominal pain. That is the most important reason why it is considered. In endometriosis also, there will be abdominal pain. And other features would be a uh, complication infertility may be present by both situation, okay? So all these points has to be considered here. Ovarian tumor in case of endometrioma or chocolate cyst. Unruptured ectopic pregnancy because endometriosis can also occur in the tube, fallopian tube. So a bit of mass can be formed there. So all these things can be considered. Now the final part is the management. Now remember, Management can be medical or surgical, medical and surgical. The medical management is easy to th th think here because uh, this tissue 
which is getting deposited is hormone sensitive tissue hormone sensitive tissue so if we inhibit or block the effect of the hormone then that endometrial tissue will be atrophied so this is done by medical management and surgical management is removal of these tissues and whatever complication those tissues have produced there we also treat them okay. this is the concept now let's move on regarding the medical treatment of endometriosis non hormonal treatment okay it can be tried in the beginning for example if the patient has very mild or minimal symptom and if the symptoms are tolerable then no medications are needed it depends on her choice if she is ready to accept these hormonal treatment then we start them if she says doctor i want to wait for some more time then no medications are given but we have to put her under review or follow up okay review or follow up that is important we review every 6 months in this case analgesia is provided by ansaid now regarding the hormonal treatment what is the principle what is the objective we have our aim is to induce atrophy of those endometrial tissue within the ectopic endometrium either by suppressing the activity of estrogen on the ectopic endometrium or by suppressing the ovarian production of estrogen either directly or indirectly via the suppression of pituitary function now we have uh, studied uh, this type of mechanism so many times in gynecology so many times we give either some hormones like estrogen and progesterone which will give negative feedback to the pituitary and hypothalamus so that whatever gonadotropins are coming from there will be stopped without gonadotropin ovary cannot produce an estrogen okay without estrogen estrogenic effect or without progesterone then those endometrial tissue that they cannot bleed or over a period of time they become atrophied this is the mechanism another type of drugs which which we can use here are gnrh analog okay gnrh analog they are very powerful drug okay so they can lead to complete stoppage of estrogen production and third type of drugs are androgen or some of the androgen derivative we all know androgen have anti estrogen property okay. so these are the important points i am highlighting here right now so that uh, you will you will have easy time to understand this now see there what are those hormonal options first is combined oral contraceptive pill ocp they are used as initial treatment often with ansaid ansaid are given to decrease pain they are taken cyclically and they have the potential to reduce the menstrual bleeding and relieve the symptoms of endometriosis and they are taken continuously for 3 months at a time to avoid the menstrual bleeding so during that time even the normal menstrual flow will be stopped not only in the endometriosis site you know the normal menstrual flow is also stopped because of the effect so this is one of the commonly used way progesterone or progesterone can also be used a common oral progesterone taken in high daily doses to induce amenorrhea include medroxy progesterone acetate or dihydrogesterone or even norethesterone uh, these are the different forms or different types of progesterone you just remember progesterone can be used and the you know uh, why progesterone are used here if you ask the question then the answer would be again the same because progesterone also induce the negative feedback and uh, everything follows after that third type of drugs here are gnrh analog so we have uh, studied about them uh, in the some previous lecture also 
they induce a medical uphorectomy. Medical uphorectomy. Now, what do you mean by this? Anyone? What is the meaning? Sir, we uh, give the DNA uh, or analog, uh, sir, which directly uh, enables the polygonadotropin uh, production and uh, sir, inhibit the uh, normal function of the ovary, which is the uh, follicular stimulation and the oocyte production. So we, uh, this is the medical operation. Absolutely correct. Absolutely. The way he is descri describing, you know, I cannot see any, you know, fault there. Uh, I want to compare this mechanism with, okay, splenectomy. Recently, you have uh, studied splenectomy in, in surgery. So, uh, in one disease called sickle cell anemia, okay, there is functional asplenia, also known as, you know, auto splenectomy. But spleen is there. Spleen, we have not removed the spleen, okay? But it has stopped functioning completely. So same type of situation here. Ovaries are there. We have not removed the ovary, but because of certain use of the drug, the functions of the ovaries are completely stopped. That's why we use the term medical uperectomy for that situation. And those drugs are GNRH analog. They are very powerful drugs. They completely stop the production of, you know, uh, uh, those FSH and LH from the pituitary and without them ovary become non-functional. Uh, another type of drugs are Danazol. Okay. Danazol. This Danazol is a testosterone derivative or androgen derivative drug. It is given for six to nine months to produce a pseudomenopause state. Okay. Pseudomenopause state means look like menopause but it is not the naturally occurring menopause. It is because of effect of the medicine. Now, what are the effect of Danazol, uh, uh, which are helpful here? Danazol suppresses LH surge. With, without LH surge, there will be no ovulation. It inhibits ovarian steroidogenesis. So steroidogenesis means synthesis of those hormones inside the ovary, okay, like estrogen. It reduces plasma level of sex hormone binding globulin and it increases pretestosterone due to reduced sex hormone binding globulin. And we all know testosterone is the antagonizing hormone for estrogen. So all of these effects of the danazole are helpful uh, in the management of endometriosis. Now, one of the uh, unwanted effect here, the androgenic side effect have limited the clinical usefulness of this drug. See this? There is a you know free testosterone which is uh, present in case of danazole, and these are called androgenic side effects. In case of female, there may be hirsutism, isn't it? There may be a development of bit of you know muscle mass, okay? change in voice, or these are uh, unwanted side effect of the androgen. Now, another type of drug is called gestrinone. Okay, it is one of the option. So gestrinone is a synthetic steroid derived from 19 norethisterone. This 19 norethisterone is a type of progesterone. So it is a synthetic steroid derived from a type of progesterone. It has similar action and side effects to danazole. And it, however, is a long acting than danazole. So just uh, try to remember the name, gestrinone. Now, Let's move on. If a recurrence of symptoms of endometriosis in patient who have already had a diagnosis occurs, then what you do? do? We use the similar type of therapy like oral contraceptive pill. Recommencing the combined oral contraceptive pill, if not contraindicated in the lady, perhaps on a three monthly continuous regime or using a GNRS agonist is appropriate. This is GNRH analog, uh, either uh, OCP or GNRH analog. So same type of treatment. There's nothing different here. If this initial treatment measure fails to control the symptom, then surgical management may be required, which we are going to talk a bit later. 
So recurrence of symptom can happen in endometriosis. Uh, so treatment, you don't need to change anything. Treatment option is the same one. Now, what is the surgical treatment then? <clears throat> what type of surgical treatment we use? First is a conservative type of surgical treatment, okay? And that is done by laparoscopy. Now, conservative surgical treatment means you don't need to remove the ovary or the uterus or the fallopian tube. You only do something to those areas where our endometrial tissue present. That is called conservative surgical treatment. And laparoscopic approach is more suitable. And principles of conservative surgical treatment include, see here, ablation, vaporization, or excision of peritoneal lesion. So we destroy these, uh, you know, endometriotic tissue at the site. Cystectomy for endometrioma. If endometrioma or chocolate cyst is present in the ovary, you remove that. That is known as cystectomy. You don't remove the whole ovary. That is not the meaning, okay? Only cyst is removed. Excision of uterosacral or rectovaginal septum endometriosis and restoration of pelvic anatomy by adhesiolysis, extensive addition may develop there. So you, you destroy those additions, you release those additions. So they are part of the treatment. Now, another type is a radical one. Okay, it is a, a bit of difficult type of treatment, okay, complicated type of surgery. And that is hysterectomy, hysterectomy, and bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. Okay. Now, this is a difficult surgery. So it is usually reserved for women who have completed their family. Okay. So consent is, of course, necessary. Before any, any surgery, we have to take consent. And we have to convince her, you know, because of the chronic effect this condition can produce because of the decreased quality in life because of that, it is a better option, but she should have completed her family. Often medical treatment is used prior to surgery, just to, you know, uh, just to make sure that those endometrial deposit, wherever are, there are a bit decrease. Now, one small question I like to ask you, how it is going to help the control of endometriotic growth? Yes, how? Anyone? How this therapy is helping the patient? In this therapy, we we do the uh, bilateral uh, salping or uh, oophorectomy. Sir, uh, when we do the oophorectomy, sir, there is uh, estrogen and uh, estrogen and uh, uh, progesterone uh, sources also reduced and also eliminate because. Those endometriosis is the uh, hormonal dependent and uh, and always due to uh, bleeding always due to the estrogen and progesterone effect. So that's why sir, uh, it uh, decreases the effect of the hormone. Very good, very good. Yes, Vijay. Yes, very good, Ifan. Yes. Sir, sir, it's mainly the same because like sir for uh, sir for the endometriosis like sir uh, like sir there should be the, uh, the endometrial proliferation sir like which is done by of course the progesterone and the estrogen and said the um, um, and said the sources are of course like sir these sir when we remove the so, uh, so sir we remove the source and ultimately sir we are closing the endometrial proliferation of course sir, the endometriosis sir. exactly the similar type of answer very good that is the concept you you guys have a good good concept that's what we need, you know, because we are at the end of this topic now. So without estrogen and without progesterone, those endometrial tissue, they will be atrophied. They need constant stimulation by this hormone. If we uh, remove the source of this hormone, then, you know, they will become atrophy. They cannot, even if they are present, you know, they cannot, uh, you know, show their effect. So that is the role of oophorectomy. Okay, and along with, you know, salping oophorectomy is done. And uh, hysterectomy is helpful in one more uh, reason, uh, like adenomyosis. If adenomyosis is there, and uh, hysterectomy can help for that purpose also.
and after bilateral oophorectomy you know there's no no real point keeping uterus inside now i am towards the end of this important topic uh, there is one small you know part or type of adeno uh, sorry endometriosis left which is called adenomyosis though we have already done this in the topic of fibroid uterus if you remember okay now see here adenomyosis is the ectopic endometrial gland and stroma which are present within the myometrium present within the myometrium of uterus resulting in symmetrically enlarged and globular uterus this is known as adenomyosis adeno is gland meiosis is a growth inside the muscle so adenomyosis which muscle muscle of the uterus the so smooth muscle of uterus now regarding the incidence it occurs in almost 30% of the of the women uh, usually in para women in their 30s to 50s years of age and they are rare in nulli para women they often coexist with uterine fibroid and to a lesser extent with endometriosis that's why we have studied this under a topic of uterine fibroid long time ago okay almost the sign and symptoms are similar similar and the same uh, condition may coexist with endometriosis somewhere else like chocolate cyst with adenomyosis pouch of douglas endometriosis with adenomyosis like that now what are the signs and symptoms of adenomyosis first is a, a pelvic pain pelvic pain it is usually non cyclical it may not uh, exactly occur at the you know time of menstruation it may occur in some other time as well okay that is known as non cyclical but usually a cyclical pain is there symmetrical uterine enlargement symmetrical okay is a uniform type of uterine enlargement it is not like a uh, fibroid this is important point here in fibroid probably one side of the uterus is asymmetrically enlarged than the other side you know which is not a case in adenomyosis it is uniformly enlarged dysmenorrhea okay is usually seen dysmenorrhea progresses with the duration of disease and this dysmenorrhea in adenomyosis doesn't occur as cyclically as does in endometriosis so again a similar uh, to pain it may occur in some other time also like menorrhagia is a common feature because of excessive bleeding okay menorrhagia look at this picture here very clear cut uh, these are the endometrial tissue which are present in the muscle area there is a endometrial cavity uh, so all of these are uh, endometrial tissue gland or stroma present inside the muscle layer so this is a case of adenomyosis another picture adenomyoma okay if a single mass is there adenomyosis if multiple masses are there meiosis is a plural form this uterus see this is symmetrically enlarged okay globular symmetrical uh, type of enlargement during bimanual examination we can feel the enlargement and it is usually tender painful type of examination so this is the point now regarding diagnosis of uh, adenomyosis uh, we can go for physical examination first and apart from them we can go either to ultrasound this ultrasound examination or even mri scan now if you remember how the mri scan was shown earlier that mri scan can easily pick up the presence of uh, endometrial tissue okay inside the muscle layer and it is very helpful to differentiate between the fibroid and adenomyosis as well now the past uh, the last part is the treatment there is no proven medical therapy for the treatment but nevertheless we can go for some of the medical therapy like gnrh agonist or gnrh analog okay uh, already talked about and said to decrease the pain and oral contraceptive pill to give the negative feedback for those 
you know uh, hormone which are coming from the pituitary side definitive treatment is hysterectomy hysterectomy okay this is the definitive therapy if child bearing uh, is uh, complete after the confirmation of diagnosis we can go for hysterectomy but if the child uh, bearing or completion of the family is incomplete then we can try these uh, medical management okay postpone uh, this definitive type of surgical treatment but once she has uh, given the consent yes i don't want any more child i am done then we can go for a uh, hysterectomy okay can go for hysterectomy so this is all about uh, the discussion on endometriosis and adenomyosis now one uh, thing before i you know stop today's class all of you please focus here this is the algorithm okay this type of algorithm are so important at the end of the lecture or at the end of any practical type of lecture you know this clearly tells us how to proceed further in the hospital setting if this type of patient comes to us what should we do step by step this is known as algorithm see endometriosis is suspected okay or uh, whether there is a if there is a chronic pain or if the lady presents with infertility cases there are the two main presentation now this pain can be minimal or perimenopausal pain may be milder or pain may be moderate to severe so accordingly uh, we can proceed like that expectant management is done means just wait and watch but keep her keep her under follow up regarding the mild type of pain in endometriosis Uh, NSAIDs, oral contraceptive pill, or progestogen are given. And in case of moderate to severe type of you know involvement, you can go for laparoscopy for the confirmation of the diagnosis, and you can also excise those lesion or destroy those lesion with the help of laparoscope. Okay, then uh, we can uh, go for post-operative medical therapy if anything is left behind. You know, if we cannot completely excise those. Ex- excise those then medical therapy will take control of that like gnrs analog okay can be given then danazol okay it's a it's a type of androgen derivative oral contraceptives progestin or progesterone and some of the drug known as aromatase inhibitor aromatase inhibitor Now, what is the use of aromatase inhibitor? Or uh, first, what is the role of aromatase enzyme? Sir, aromatase uh, convert the androgen into the estrogen. Sir, I uh, uh, that's why sir we give the aromatase inhibitor. Very yes. good, very good, excellent. Sir, I, I have a question about this. Can I answer? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sir, uh, in uh, endometriosis, sir, we uh, remove the ovary. For the source of the estrogen and progesterone, but we said no. There is a peripheral aromatization and also peripheral production of the estrogen from the adipose tissue. But sir, how we can handle this if there is a symptom due to also uh, after the surgery there is also symptom due to these hormones? That's a very good question. But you know the amount of uh, estrogen production after we we remove them are very very minimal, very minimal. Okay. so probably that minimal amount of estrogen may not be able to produce those typical signs and symptoms of endometriosis it depends if some of the patients are uh, you know having them then we we have to go for those aromatase inhibitor yes aromatase inhibitor because remember uh, how uh, the lady will uh, you know form estrogen after the menopause or after the ovaries are removed this is Uh, from the conversion of androgen into estrogen because androgen production is continuous from the uh, which is the another source for upper androgen now if ovaries are not there what is another source adrenal glands adrenal cortex adrenal gland excellent very good we have we have talked about this before so from the adrenal uh, gland you know one of the layer of the adrenal cortex known as zona you know uh, reticularis There are three layers: zona glomerulosa, 
zona fasciculata and zona reticularis. This zona reticularis is responsible for androgen secretion, but that androgen will be converted into estrogen by aromatase enzyme in the peripheral fat or lipid. So we can use aromatase inhibitor for that purpose. But that chances uh, will not uh, come because of the very little amount of estrogen. Now, if there are a recurrence, uh, then medical treatment and uh, this uh, advanced or difficult type of therapy, I should say, rather than advanced, okay, uh, complicated type of treatment like total abdominal hysterectomy, TAS, total abdominal hysterectomy, and bilateral salpingo oophorectomy is done if childbearing is complete. If the lady is infertile as a result of endometriosis, then okay, uh, you first confirm the diagnosis. Is it really because of endometriosis or something else? You confirm that with the help of laparoscopy. Okay, Try to excise the lesion. Probably they may help. Probably they may help. Especially if you have released the uh, you know, uh, obstruction in the fallopian tube. If you have uh, removed the chocolate cyst from the ovary, wait for some time whether they may help or not. If they do not help, then we can go for in vitro fertilization. That is the only way. So this is all about the discussion of endometriosis.